Guys, the stock market may be about to change in a massive, massive way. And it has to do with something Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon are teaming up to try to do. And this could be a fundamental shift in the way the stock market works. And this could affect a lot of investors and traders out there, guys. This is a pretty big stuff. So what this has to do with, let's think for a second about what affects a stock as far as a stock price going up a ton or down a ton on a specific day. The first thing that comes to mind mind when I think of something that would make a stock go up a ton or down a ton on a day is earnings, okay? Earnings are the first thing I think about, all right? Then after that, I think about probably analysts. Analysts, you know, when they upgrade or downgrade a stock, you know, sometimes these stocks can move five or 10% just based upon an analyst coming out and saying, oh, I like that stock for ABC reason. I, I hate that stock, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, it deserves to be sold and whatnot. Analysts can move a stock in a big in a big way. So after earnings, analysts is probably the next biggest thing. And then after that, the next biggest thing is I think is about just like the market trend. like. How is the market doing overall? If the you know market's going up tons every single day, the good chance you know stocks are going up tons every day. Um, if the market's going down in massive ways and it's crashing, good chance those stocks are crashing. Okay, so in that order, those are kind of the biggest things that affect a stock as far as going up a ton or down a ton on a day. Now, this first one, the biggest thing, could be affected in a major way based upon what Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon are trying to do here, guys. And if they get this through, this is going to be definitely a fundamental shift in the stock market. So Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon join forces to convince CEOs to end quarterly profit forecasts, all right? Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon have teamed up once again to call for an end to quarterly earnings guidance by companies. Dimon, the chairman of Business Roundtable, said the group of CEOs have thrown its support behind companies backing away from the practice. Executives often feel pressure to make quarterly forecasts, but it can often put a company in a position where management from the CEO down feels obligated to deliver earnings and therefore may do things that they wouldn't otherwise have done, okay? Basically making short-term decisions just to try to hit these numbers, whatever's possible. Diamond, the chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, and Buffett, the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, wrote about the group's endorsement in an opinion in a column on the Wall Street Journal. It's a long-simmering debate, but one that has gotten more attention in an era where activist investors are vocal in pushing companies to deliver on their promises. Companies forecast its sales and profit numbers to Wall Street analysts who use it to produce research and stock recommendations for investors. Missing the number can often result in a big short-term stock moves. Making a forecast and then hitting the target are seen as uh, the management's expectation to eliminate volatility. Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway doesn't give guidance, which Buffett has said can tempt executives to manipulate numbers to meet street expectations. It's Sending the wrong message, Buffett told CNBC's Becky Quickie. When companies get to where they're sort of living and dying by the so-called numbers, they do a lot of things that are really counter to the long-term interests of the business. Buffett and Diamond have helped produce a set of voluntary governance guidance two years ago, which was signed by more than a dozen executives. One of the principles outlined in the report said companies shouldn't feel obligated to give quarterly guidance, which for years has been blame for many executives obsessing with short-term results there, guys. So this is a huge, massive move. If companies stop giving, you know, uh, um, you know, all this quarterly guidance, especially, you know, they're talking specifically about profit guidance, all right, saying we're going to hit EPS number. Because what will happen so many times is a company will say, hey, we're going to do a dollar of EPS this quarter. And then maybe the company comes in at, you know, 98 cents or whatever. And yet that stock will move 10 plus percent in a day. And it's a massive move. And it's like, holy smokes, they barely missed by two cents, but the stock goes down over 10%. They didn't miss numbers by 10% or 15%, but yet the stock will move like that. And it just makes earnings days, you know, extremely volatile. Now, if, if they can eliminate this, it doesn't mean it's going to eliminate volatility in general from earnings periods because you're still going to have these analysts 
who are going to be making up whatever numbers they want to make, you know, uh, they think that company is going to hit for that quarter, okay? So it's not going to eliminate the volatility in, 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 you know, total for earnings, but it can eliminate some of that volatility, which would fundamentally change the market. If, say, you go from maybe, you know, stocks moving 10, 15, 20% on earnings, what if the average stock only moves 2 or 3% on earnings or maybe 4 or 5%? But these analysts are going to be in a situation where their job is going to get a lot harder. It's real easy as an analyst if you're getting if you're getting guidance from the company so a company says oh we're going to do a dollar of uh, earnings per share this this coming quarter. Well, guess what? As an analyst, your job's pretty freaking easy, right? If you're a little more bullish, maybe you'll say, oh, they'll probably do a dollar or three. If you're a little more bearish, you'll say, oh, they're gonna do 97 cents or something like that, and your job's really easy. But if this company doesn't say anything, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna do 50 cents this quarter, a dollar, a dollar 50? We don't know because they didn't give us any guidance for that, okay? So I think, in my opinion, I think companies should probably get rid of overall guidance, okay, as far as quarterly guidance. I think companies should give annual guidance, which is once a year. Once a year, they should give total guidance. And if they see, you know, if there's a big move either way, so they see, the, well, we're never going to hit that guidance, you know, throughout the, the year, you know, as it goes along. If they say, oh, we're never going to hit these numbers or whatnot that we had said we were going to hit, then they can update that as the year goes on. Or if, you know, things are way better than they expected and they can say, well, we're actually going to do much better than we had, you know, initially anticipated. I think one year guidance is good. You give one year guidance for, your, you know, your, what you expect the revenue, the EPS, and all those numbers to do but the fact is I think you know just by doing the Warren Buffett plan which is just kind of eliminating the uh, profit guidance I think that's uh, that's one you know start that can definitely change things but I think if you eliminate the revenue guidance and also the gross margin guidance I think that's also a big thing there's no reason out there in my personal opinion you need any more than one year of guidance okay as a long-term investor I don't care necessarily that the company's gonna, you know, make 95 cents this quarter or 92 cents or 97 cents. What I care is that if that company's gonna hit their numbers for the overall year, okay? I'm a long-term investor. I wanna know on a year-on-year -year basis, are they hitting their numbers, okay? I don't want a management team that feels like if they said we're gonna do 95 cents of, you know, EPS and we're gonna do $2 billion of revenue, we gotta at least meet that or we gotta beat that or we're freaking screwed and the stock's gonna tank and all that. I don't want, you know, a, a, a management team that makes those type of expectations for themselves because it just puts so much short-term pressure on the company and what ends up happening is you, you have these executives start leaving these companies because the pressure is too much or you have people that just you know are very unhappy or just focus short term and they start making short-term decisions hiring and firing decisions based upon short-term stuff they start you know doing whatever it takes just to hit those numbers short term when really that could be negatively affecting the company over the long term because if you make a ton of short-term decisions eventually what's going to end up happening is your long-term plan is not going to come to fruition because you made a bunch of negative short-term you know decisions in the short term okay so one year guidance is enough now if this all goes through this could negatively affect uh, a few people okay one it could affect day traders this could absolutely affect day traders because day traders they want as much volatility in the market as possible okay someone that's trading in and out of stocks all the time and is just trying to capitalize on a stock moving up you know a few cents or a few dollars or whatnot day traders can be affected by this uh, you know swing traders even you know someone that maybe goes in on their earnings and you know uh, shorts the stock and maybe that stock only moves five percent instead of usually it moves ten percent or somebody goes long on a stock and you know let's say it goes up, it only goes up 5% versus 10 or 15%. So day traders will be affected. Also brokerages can be affected. Uh, basically, uh, brokerages, you know, make a ton of money off of trade commissions. You know, everybody except pretty much Robinhood, they charge, you know, three, five, ten dollars per trade. So brokerages can absolutely be affected negatively by this. Um, investment banks to a certain extent will be affected negatively by this. But the question is, can they get it through? I think there's a good possibility because I think CEOs are just starting to wake up to this quarterly guidance, especially on the profit numbers. That's just ridiculous, man. It's so short term and thinking like, like it's, it's just not 
right. It's not right. I think they should do away with all the short-term guidance. I think it should be one-year guidance on the revenue, the gross margin, you do, you know, the EPS expectations, the whole deal, the net income, once a year, okay? And if you feel like you're gonna be way better than those numbers or way worse than those numbers as the year goes on, you update that. But quarterly numbers, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant to anybody that's uh, really in the stock market for long-term, you know, perspective, you know, investing in a stock for the long term, which is really what the stock market's about. It's about people investing in a stock and holding that stock because they believe in that company over the coming years, okay? That's what stock market investing really is. You know, it's been obviously, you know, changed over the past few decades, you know, traders and whatnot have come in and all this different stuff and it's, the market's kind of changed forever. But when you think, when you break it down to its simplest thing, the, the stock market is, you know, a place where companies can raise capital, where companies can have great governance and where companies, you know, can find long-term investors in those companies and those people can hopefully reap the benefits of getting dividends and, and you know, uh, an appreciating share price over time. So anyways, I want to know your guys' opinion on this subject. I would love to hear from you guys as always in that comment section. Let me know your opinion on this subject. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.